Rick Ross, who started his rap career under the name Teflon Da Don, has always been known for his expressions of opulence and luxury in his music. Ever since his debut album, Port of Miami, was released in 2006, he has been rapping about hustling his way to the top by making boss moves, and has been speaking them into existence ever since. From establishing the Maybach Music Group, to being a franchisee of Wingstop, with locations throughout the U.S., to endorsing his own Bel Air Rosé Champagne, Ross has never been short of maneuvers on the chessboard. I had been writing music for years in the studio. You, you gotta understand, being from Miami, I was thinking about jewels, you know what I'm saying? Mansions, estates, acres, you know what I mean? And that wasn't really my vein, so the music I made, it didn't, you know, no one took as being lucrative, and no one really looked at, so I was really overlooked for maybe 10 years. And around my father and my mother, it was always cool to dream. Mm. You know what I mean? If I seen something I like, they ain't tell me, don't look at that, nah. You see that? Yeah. Yeah, I see it. One of his most notable moves was made in 2014, when he purchased a 109-room mansion just outside of Atlanta. The enormous 54,000 square foot mansion sits on 235 acres and is the largest single family home in the state of Georgia. This estate has an indoor pool, a movie theater, and a bowling alley. This is the indoor pool. This is my brother's house, Ross's house. This is the indoor pool. I ain't showed you nothing yet. There are 12 bedrooms, and the dining room seats 100 people. At the time, it seemed like a remarkable feat for Ross considering this estate was previously known to be valued at 10 million. It wasn't long until reports surfaced that the mansion which Ross had just purchased used to be owned by a legendary boxing champion. There's a line on your album that really struck me, and I, I know there's a lot of people that struck. You said, um, I own the biggest residential pool in the U.S. How does it feel from going to see the Holyfield estate to them owning it? It's one of them things that really, really motivated me, me coming from where we came from. Us, you better believe it. Us having to walk to, you know, our pool, our local pool. You know what I'm saying? They charge us 50 cent to get in it. You know what I mean? You had to have a quarter for the locker or somebody would steal your shoes if you left them out. So just to come from where we come from and, you know, to push myself, drive myself, as well as the team. That's how we all should look at it. That's something that we all go on. Same way Rose did it, I could do it times two. Holyfield was a massive draw in heavyweight boxing, who reigned as an undisputed champion in both the cruiserweight and heavyweight divisions in the late 80s into the 90s. His biggest fight, the infamous Holyfield versus Tyson, that spun out of control in a bizarre, ear-biting finish by Mike Tyson, brought in just over $100 million by itself. It is estimated that Holyfield earned a staggering $230 million from his 26 years in the ring with 44 wins across 57 fights, including 29 brutal KOs that helped make him a household name. Holyfield moved into the Holyfield estate during the height of his career in 1994. The mansion was in his hometown of Atlanta, and the $20 million purchase was labeled as a monument to his success. I just want to be able to share that game with those young dudes and say, yo, Staying rich, one of the, the, the biggest keys to that is empowering your circle, empowering mm. your family. Because you being rich and everybody else being broke next to you is only going to be so long before you you, you, you you jammed up. Right. But if you can make an investment that empower them, they, can, they don't need to ask you for nothing. Boxer Evander Holyfield may be facing his toughest fight yet, but it won't be in the ring. The former heavyweight champion's home is in foreclosure, and he may not have enough money to save it. I'm just real surprised because um, I can't imagine having that kind of money and not using it wisely, if that's the case. In 2008, Holyfield's estate was reported to be under foreclosure and was to be auctioned off to the highest bidder for cash. 
Holyfield had been going through financial turmoil with multiple child support cases on his head and was even threatened with jail time if he didn't pay up. He also had some previous failed business ventures, which included a record label, which cost $3.1 million, a restaurant business which cost over $10 million, and other products bearing his name including barbecue sauce, a kitchen grill, and a fire extinguisher. Holyfield also went through three divorces and has 11 children. It's a lot of niggas that sold a lot of singles and got a gazillion streams. Means nothing. But uh, it's your TV hanging on the wall. Without and when I say down. that, I say that in a way of, you know, are you really living? Are you mm -hmm. reaping those benefits? Yeah. What's going on inside the house? What's really going on yeah. in the house? And that amongst me and my homies, that's our way of saying, is your TV hanging on the wall? Holyfield reportedly stated that the mansion cost him a million dollars per year to operate, and electricity bills came in at around 17000 Holyfield was supposedly also let down by the people around him during his fighting days, and this was said to have had a detrimental effect on his finances. You don't have other body looking out for you. Everybody taking something for themselves. Man, everybody was just stealing, man. They just stealing, stealing. It seems like you trusted the wrong people. Well, yeah. At the time of the property's final foreclosure, just before the release of his sixth studio album, Mastermind, Ricky Rose was perfectly positioned to swoop the mansion off the market at a discounted price of $5.8 million. Ross was making a huge statement with this purchase by truly living up to his name as the boss. When you, you're younger, you have less access to great advice, so, so on and so forth. You be a lot, a lot of your, your decision making could be desperate. But after you take those losses and as you grow, my decision making, you know, got a lot better. That's just what I feel like. Will I ever take another loss? I'm sure I will. Because mm. that come with the game and that come with the gambling that I'm going to make. But I know the decisions I make is I'm gonna always make the best ones based on the knowledge that I have. Right. When people who watching this, when they struggling just coming off an of L or going into an L or in the middle of an L, they understand it ain't over. It ain't over. You know what I'm saying? If you somewhere right now and you're in the middle of a foreclosure, that definitely don't mean you will never own another home. For real. Now named the promised land by Ross, he seems to be managing its upkeep pretty well after recently purchasing an 87-acre property right next to his existing mansion. Ross has also stated that the original mansion is now paying for itself. Glory, morning glory, which you see outside my door is a, a gathering of film producers and directors that possibly want to uh, rent the estate. Now, it's become an attractive location site for film producers and directors who want to pay to use it with the Coming to America sequel being the most recent movie that was shot there, in which Rosé himself made an appearance. In November 2019, CNBC reported that Evander Holyfield was living in a two-bedroom apartment and had started to make changes to improve his financial situation. In March of 2021, Ross went and paid $3.5 million for NBA star Amari Stoudemire's South Florida mansion in an all-cash deal. In this story of turmoil and triumph, both Holyfield and Ross's different choices serve as a valuable lesson to us all. It shows that no matter how much success you get or how much millions you attain in your career, it can all be lost overnight if the right financial infrastructure isn't in place. It didn't seem as though Holyfield had any real infrastructure in place to maintain his wealth or anybody around him that had his best interests at heart. On the flip side, Ross continues to add to his empire and has multiple revenue streams in place and has even turned the promised land itself into an asset.